name is Milka, and this fall I'm the education intern at the Madison Audubon Society. Fall is my favorite time of year, to be honest. So I've been spending a lot of time outside just taking a look at the world around me, even more than usual. <laughs> if you have taken some time outside or even just looked out your window, I'm sure you've noticed some of the things I have, and that's it just looks a lot different than it did during the summertime, or the wintertime, or even the springtime. So if you've been taking note of these changes and thinking to yourself, huh, I wonder what that means, and guess what? You've been doing science! There are scientists who actually focus on those changes and looking at what they mean. Those scientists are called phenologists, and they study phenology. Let's take a closer look at that word. A definition of phenology that I like to use is that it's the study of seasonal phenomena in relation to climate, plants, and animals. But to understand that definition of phenology, we need to understand the word phenomena, which is the plural of the word phenomenon. A phenomenon is just something that we see that is in question. So for example, rainbows could be a phenomenon. If we look at them and say, hey, I wonder what those mean or how they happen, you're looking at a phenomenon. One of the most notable things about the change from summer to fall is the weather. I'm sure if you've gone outside recently, you've noticed that it's not very warm outside and that it's a lot colder than it has been. This is because the part of the earth that we're on, the northern hemisphere, it's getting less sunlight than it usually does in the summertime. This means that we get a lot less time in the daylight. So if you've noticed that the sun has been setting a lot earlier, you're not wrong. Lately, the sun has been setting at around 7 p.m. And in the summertime, it sets at usually around 9 p.m. or so at the latest. The days are getting a little bit shorter, slowly but surely. Another big change you might have noticed recently is looking at plant life. If you've been outside recently, I'm sure you've noticed that the trees are all these fun colors like orange, red, and yellow, when in the summertime, they were green. This is due to what we mentioned before about the sunlight. When plants receive less sunlight, the trees realize it, and they slow down the production of something called chlorophyll that helps them make their food. In slowing down chlorophyll creation, which is green, you're able to see all of the different colors that are also in the leaf year-round orange, yellow, and red, and eventually the tree lets them go and they fall to the ground, which makes all the fun leaf piles that I like to jump in. Trees like pines and spruces, or evergreens, stay green throughout the fall season, which is why we have tons of lush green evergreens during the holiday season. If you can get outside sometime soon, it's really fun to try to find as many leaves in as many different colors as you can. It's pretty cool to see how different these leaves can be all at the same time. And not all the changes in plant life have to do with leaves falling or changing color. There are a few different examples I can think of which you might be able to see around your own neighborhoods. For example, if you're walking around and see a lot of what look like green or brown or black balls the size of tennis balls along the ground, you might have found a black walnut tree. This is the time of year where they like to drop their fruit, the walnuts, and if you're lucky, you might be able to see a squirrel caching them away for the winter. If you live near a lake or a pond, you might be able to see cattails. Around this time of year, they're fluffing up with what look like white cotton balls and blowing them off in the wind. This is them spreading their seeds so that they can grow. This time of year is also when milkweed likes to spread seeds. So they open their pods and do something similar where they use the wind to blow their fluffy seeds away and spread them around. And lastly, my favorite part of phenology is animal phenology. So one aspect of it that you're probably very familiar with is bird migration. Around this time of year, birds that migrate spend their time getting ready and eventually flying to the warmer places that they spend the cold Wisconsin winters in. A really familiar sight in the Madison area is seeing the migration of Canada geese. If you look up, sometimes you can hear them honking and they're flying in a V formation in a southern direction. Other times, you can see them kind of congregating near bodies of water, such as ponds or lakes, like you see here. 
when they stop at these places called stopovers, they spend their time resting and getting ready for another part of their flight. It's also interesting to note that Canada geese don't always migrate. Sometimes they hang around the parks, ponds, and lakes that they usually do all through the winter. So if you see a Canada goose during the dead of winter in the cold Wisconsin wind, don't necessarily be worried, just decided to stick around. If you're lucky, you might also be able to see sandhill cranes or whooping cranes flying through the area for migration. Sandhill cranes have kind of become a really big staple for Madisonites because they spend so much time hanging around here. Fall is also the time of year where reptiles like turtles and amphibians like frogs and salamanders will start getting ready to hibernate. Around now is the time where they start to get their last little bits of food in to get through the winter and eventually they burrow into what we call hibernacula. Since these species are cold-blooded, their body temperature changes with the environment around them. So the best they can do during the winter is to find a spot that will keep them nice and warm and from freezing. This allows them to use as little energy as possible and keep them warm and without needing to go and look for food in the cold weather. These events or phenomena that I've mentioned with you are just some of the many, many, many different examples of phenology we can see this time of year. It's really fun to go out and try to look at as many different examples as you can and keep track of them. Phenologists can take the information they learned about today's phenomena and compare them to phenomena in the past, or even use the information that they have now to predict future phenomena. So if you keep track of these things at home, yes, it makes you a phenologist. It can be really fun and exciting to look at your own information after some time has passed and compare the changes between them. I had a lot of fun talking about phenology with you today and I hope you learned something fun too. Thanks and see you next time!